Hi, Doug Humphreys here from the 8 Hour Lunch Podcast. If you didn't catch the last episode that's Making Beer, Episode 1, you'll want to go watch that first because, well, this is Episode 2 and it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. We're going to finish uh, bottling the beer in this stage and, well, tasting it, and that's my favorite part. So, what do we have here? Sugar, climbing sugar. And about how much was that? Three fourths of a cup, uh, melted or dissolved, I should say, into two cups. Yeah, that's I know. All right, so yeah, we dissolved it into about a pint of water and put it in the bottom of the bucket. And now the next step is we're gonna move this into there. And what the finishing sugar does is let this, uh, it reactivates the yeast and creates the new bubbles that makes beer so nice and fizzy. So you know, take the airlock off here. And remember you don't want to splash it. You don't want to aerate it at all. So when you siphon it into the bucket, make sure you don't cause a bunch of uh, yeah, activity. Other, otherwise you'll end up with a beer that tastes like stale cardboard, they say. Yeah. I don't know. We've never had one turn out that way. All right. So there are a couple ways you could do this. You could just start with a hose like this if you wanted to, but we recommend using a siphon starter. And the reason you want to use a siphon starter is because if you just use a hose, you'll end up putting it in your mouth. There are lots of germs in there that'll ruin your beer. We learned that the hard way with mead. So. Go ahead and put it in there actually if you want. Actually, that's a good idea. We'll set this in here. There's one other contraption that you'll find really, really handy if you're bottling and that's this little gizmo right here. This one has a button on the end. Can you get in on, on there kind of tight? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I do that? On the top. Okay. And what happens is you set this wand down inside the bottle and it fills up and you pull it out right when it gets full and it keeps you from making a lot of mess and having to pinch off a hose. So I'm just going to attach this in. Make sure you don't touch your stuff on any unclean surfaces. I put that right in the bottom here, and the idea is not to splash it. So you can put this right on the bottom. You should touch the bottom where the sugar's waiting. Yeah. Now I'm not putting the wand on this time because we're not bottling. And make sure you've got a good seal there, and give it a pump or two. One usually does it, and you don't want to put like I just did. I got a little bit of sediment in there. You want to keep this from going to the very bottom of your carboy, otherwise you're going to pull all that yucky sediment up and into your beer, and that's not good either. And if you can come over here, Heidi, oh, that smells good. I'm showing them the sediment because it's oh, nasty. Okay. Yes, it is. You nasty. don't want that in your beer. And you can see it's filling up quite nicely there in the bucket. Okay, after you've finished siphoning all the beer, or the wort, still I guess in this case, out of the carboy, You'll have a bunch of ugly looking sediment down there in the bottom. And you're just going to want to very slowly stir in the priming sugar. And the whole point is to just not get any air in there so you don't get that yucky, stale taste. And after you've done that, well, you want to move it up to a higher surface. You can siphon it again and it'll be time to put it in the bottles. That's good. All right, so now we're actually uh, siphoning it out. I'll start the siphon starter. And Heidi's got the one, are you tapping it on the bottom? And the nice thing about this is you won't have to crimp it off when you're done. Just let it fill up like that, put a cap on, Okay, so now we're bottling, and that's the easy part. Next to drinking, it's the easiest part anyway. So you'll need one of these little gizmos here. Set the lids on right after we 
poured the beer inside of it. And you'll just set it down like this. And there you go. And the type of lid we use is actually an oxygen absorbing lid. And you'll want to use that to eat up any extra air that's in the head space above the top of the liquid. And this will sit for about a week before it's actually carbonated enough to drink, but it won't be ready for another two to three weeks. It probably tastes best I in see, a I see the funky camera not, thing. <laughs> <laughs> you want this to sit for at least another two to three weeks before it's actually fully drinkable. You could drink it about a week, it'll be carbonated by then. But uh, for best results, you'll probably want to wait, wait for about four or five weeks to drink it. Okay. okay, so about a week later, it'll actually be ready to go, although I wouldn't drink it for a couple more weeks. So this is just our test bottle. You can hear the fizz there. That's a good sign. We're excited about that. I just saw Heidi grinning behind the camera. Got a nice frozen glass here. I'm going to pour it in. Oh, that's looking good. I think we have success. All right, that's going to spill over, isn't it? So there it is. There's your Irish Red, the other batch that's in right now. The other batch that's in right now is uh, is our Corona style beer. And uh, should I sample? That one's going to keep beeping at you. Oh my! <laughs> that's. Good.